You can lay your own terrace. On this terrace, we're laying concrete tiles with a natural stone look. These are easy to install and easy to maintain, and they give a charming atmosphere to your terrace. There are a number of things you need to take into account. Which ones they are indeed, you'll see in an instant. Of course, first determine where you want your terrace. In our case, we must consider the existing walking paths. Also note, the surface where your terrace will be must be stable even, and draining. If that is not the case, you will first have to prepare it further. If you know where your terrace will be, then you measure how big your terrace will be approximately. Create a sketch, map measurements. This way, you'll know the needed surface and can pick which tile and laying pattern fits best. The first step in building our terrace is picking a stone. We've chosen a concrete stone of ADX40. The top layer is a very fine mixture and you can see that there is also a design present. To hold the entire terrace firmly together, we are going to work with a concrete drill that drills the entire terrace. To know how many tiles you need, divide the total size of your patio by the size of your tiles. Here we can easily calculate, because the 3mm joint is immediately in the size. Count about 5% extra for the cutting loss. To know how many coping stones you need, measure the edges. Also add some margin here. Order all materials at once now to avoid large differences. It is important that you leave the tiles on the pallet and in the original packaging until just before placement. This is how you prevent damage to the products. With everything calculated, we can now measure and set out the exact size of the patio. Use some concrete mixers and a tension rope for this. The more accurate you are here, the fewer problems you will have afterwards. Wrap your rope around the concrete mixer and overlap it to clamp it. We have not yet taken into account the correct drainage when setting out. This should approximately be about 1 to 2 centimeters per meter. To accurately set the height, we use a laser meter. Those who don't have this can also work with a feeler gauge or rent one. Our reference is the hiking trail. We place a rope here a few centimeters inward to neatly align with our tiles and curbstones. Using the construction laser, we determine a reference point. We calculate the needed centimeters of drainage and transfer that to the opposite terrace corner. Time to bring out the curb stones. Stabilized sand layers under the curb stones. Spread sand in a strip for the curb stone. Tighten the stabilizer to get a solid base. Measure to the right height, sprinkle loose stabilizer. The curb stones are meticulously equipped with a precise tongue and groove system. We carefully grind that at the very first stone so that we can seamlessly connect to the adjacent footpath. Place your first curb stone. Check sufficiently if the water is level. Fill sides with stabilizer, ensuring curbstone is well encapsulated. Place edging stones along the rope. The tongue and groove system ensures you can work neatly in line. Tap where necessary with a rubber hammer until the stone is at the right height. If you need to precisely reduce in size a stone, mark your size on the stone and get a grinding wheel. Shape stone to fit. We now transfer the size of this angle to the other with the construction laser to ensure our terrace has enough drainage on both sides.
Now placing curb stones on this side too. The curb stones not only look good, they will also ensure that the terrace cannot shift because if the terrace shifts, weeds could get between the tiles. So we're going to secure curb stones well, ensuring at least a third of the heights in stable sand. Those with a truly keen eye might have already noticed. Our curb stones indeed appear different than usual. The base may be 6 cm, but it becomes gradually narrower at the top to 1.5 tenths thick. We also place them a couple of centimeters lower than our level, so that the curb stone comes about halfway up the tile. In this way, our terrace remains beautifully bordered, but we can allow the curb stone to be overgrown with grass, making it virtually invisible. Place edging stones, then let harden. Now it's time to tackle the last side. The terrace we're making here is higher than the rest of the garden. At the end, we won't work with edging stones, but with these building blocks. We are going to make flower boxes from these building blocks, and we can attach them with the supplied mounting brackets. These building blocks come in different sizes, so you can be very creative with them. The building blocks are equipped with slots where you can slide in anchor constructions. Here you then attach various connectors, depending on what you want to make. This way you can build a lot of constructions for your garden. There are also building blocks in other formats or for other applications, which allows you to make a lot of creative constructions. The flower boxes are at the same height as the terrace, so the tension cord must go almost 2 centimeters back up. Here too, we first implement a layer of stabilized sand. To check if this is indeed at the right height, Roger swiftly makes a tool. He transfers the correct size with a piece of scrap wood and uses this to see if the height is correct. Then he checks again with the level if the foundation lies nicely flat. He removes some stabilizer where necessary. In this way, you get a first level. From here, you then transfer the size in the extension and to the other side of the flower box. Use a ruler or level for this. Regularly check if everything fits nicely. Then you carefully remove the excess stabilizer between the two rows. The blocks can be in their place. There will be two rows on top of each other. Check with a level if the blocks are nicely aligned with the tension cord. This is our terrace edge and must lie straight at the right distance. The end side is not a full length. We use the grinding wheel again to shorten it. Never grind everything through in one go, but make a first line and then go deeper into the stone until you are through it. The corner of the flower box is formed and can be attached to each other. Do this with a special angle connector. You should secure this by carefully attaching two precisely machined nuts to the provided high-quality anchor bolts. Check your corners. Check the second corner. Roger is making a tool again. He made a piece of wood exactly the width of the inside of the flower box. With that, he checks if his two rows are parallel. On top of the first row, the second row comes immediately. For this, we work on the solidity in a half brick bond, so the blocks must be sized first. Provide each individual block with the necessary, appropriate anchor constructions to ensure their stability. A corner connector also comes with the second row. Place it upside down so you can connect the connectors to each other with an anchor build. We essentially interconnect the two rows to each other with the linear connectors that we precisely place vertically. We put one at the end and one in the middle. This is how you quickly build the flower boxes. 
how, where, and how many connectors you place depends on what you want to make. You can simply attach the connectors in many varied ways. The key thing is it forms a solid hole. Regularly check if your straight edge and fit are working and use a square to check your corners. Between two flower boxes we place here, there will be more stair steps. The standard is 15 cm high. However, here a height of 18 cm is needed, and there is an existing walkway to consider. Creative thinking is the message. So Roger places the first steps upside down, deeper in the ground. Because these are heavy steps, he is assisted here by a crane operator. Once the initial steps are perfectly level, Roger carefully places another sturdy metal rod. Then, he meticulously follows up with the installation of the second step. The round rod guarantees that the lifting straps can smoothly and easily come from underneath the steps without any significant hassle. The rod can then be removed. A final check with the level, because the stairs must also be sloping, and the second flower box can be started. The building elements are easy to place. The only thing you should not forget is to slide a number of anchor constructions into the slots in order to be able to attach the connectors. Did you forget one? Not bad. Just cut a slot piece where you won't place a connector and place the anchor. Slide that to the right place. Where necessary, you can also secure your rows horizontally with a straight connector for stability. A final step to give our flower boxes firmness and to prevent them from falling apart is the placement of a connection profile. First, mark your size and grind the profile to size. Then attach a profile to the straight connectors with anchor bolts. Distribute them along your length at a max of 1.8 meters from each other. As the last job for today, we are placing a few recovery tiles for the stairs to get a nice connection with the existing walkway. We simply place them in the stabilizer and tap to the correct height with a rubber mallet. The edge of the terrace is there. This now needs some time to harden. In a subsequent episode, we will continue with the rest of the terrace. We place the tiles and then grout them afterwards.